the issues that we face today are no longer just localized and regional. They're international and they're of a global scale. You know, we need a place where young people can go to, to learn systematically how they can tackle the world's greatest problems. Um, and so, you know, we created the Unreasonable Institute as a place to do that's just that because we can't afford to send the next generation of people into the world unprepared to tackle these problems. Being unreasonable, um, sometimes being impatient, is what does define progress. I think it's interesting that the whole concept of Unreasonable Institute because basically that means people with ideas that are so big that most people they would talk to kind of give them a look and say, all right, great idea, you know, why don't you talk to me in a couple of years when, uh, when you've come back down to earth. This is a huge experiment. What we're doing, we don't know if it will work or if, it, you know, if it'll reach the stars or if it's just gonna flop. But what I do know, what I'm positive about, is that there's no experiment more worthy than this one. 25 brilliant entrepreneurs working on ventures in 17 countries and hailing from six continents will convene this summer in Boulder. Living under the same roof and sharing the same meals for 10 weeks, they have convened in Boulder this summer for one reason, to create ventures that future generations will remember as having changed the world. Ventures that will effectively address a social or environmental need, that are financially self-sustaining, and that will ultimately scale to meet the needs of at least one million people. It's no big deal. The name The Unreasonable Institute is inspired by the English playwright George Bernard Shaw, who's famous for saying that the reasonable man adapts himself to the world, the unreasonable one persists in adapting the world to himself. Therefore, all progress is dependent on the unreasonable man and woman. This year marks our first annual institute, and hundreds of entrepreneurs applied. From those hundreds of entrepreneurs, we selected 70 to interview, and out of those interviews, we ended up selecting 35 finalists. But in order to attend the institute, we really wanted to put these entrepreneurs to the test and test their entrepreneurial mettle. So we put these 35 finalists on a website that we called the Unreasonable Marketplace, which showcased themselves, their teams, and their ventures. Only the first 25 finalists to receive $10 from 650 people like you get to attend. And it's a race to raise $6,500 in pledges. And if we win, we get to go to the States to meet like the Richard Bransons of the charity world and make this whole thing happen. So we're like really close, but we need your help. If you like the idea, if you think it's funny, and if you do give a crap, please pledge by clicking the link below. And ultimately, just shy of 3,000 people from over 130 countries voted with their dollars to say that these entrepreneurs warranted a seat at the Unreasonable Institute in Boulder this summer. Boulder's an extraordinary place, I and mean, there's the highest concentration of wealth, intellect. You've got a really strong startup and entrepreneurism culture here around IT. There's some great things happening in San Francisco and some amazing things happening in London, but, but nowhere do you have the real density of just extraordinary people that you've got here in Boulder, plus one of the most amazing natural settings. I can't believe that after a year and a half of blood, sweat, and tears, after waking up every single morning and thinking about this, after going to bed every single night and dreaming about this, that fellows are on planes from Venezuela, from Pakistan, from every corner of the globe, and I feel like this is the culmination of my whole life, and it's, it's all gonna start in a few days. Well, we're waiting for our first unreasonable fellow from India. Um, Trina supposedly is on this flight, so it's very exciting, kind of very nervous, because uh, I'm had some issues with flying in, so we're just hoping she comes off this plane. Her right here. How are you? Are you so tired? Welcome, welcome. I just does. Oh my gosh. Well, I don't want to dinner. I just want to go to sleep. It's one down. Got many more to go. It's just been some of the longest minutes of my life waiting for it. Right now, I'm picking a song so that when fellows enter, they feel like they're entering a battlefield, which is kind of what's going to happen here in the next 10 weeks. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. Right, right. Part of what we want to do in this first week is create the community. You know, give the entrepreneurs the opportunity to start feeling comfortable with each other so that they can feel comfortable failing in front of one another, being vulnerable in front of one another. <laughs> Matt, 
I was just talking to, to one of the fellows last night uh, about something that's so incredibly unique about the Unreasonable Institute. It's that we all live under the same roof. We got Australian, British, French. It's good times. American. What comes out of that is, is incredible in terms of innovation. We got Jason and Daniel coming in today. Jason, Oh, great. Welcome. Cool. We, we purposefully chose entrepreneurs from all sorts of different industries, from water, engineering, healthcare, poverty alleviation, uh, you know, environmental technology, shelter. Um, and, and it was a belief that if we brought together this much diversity with a focus on creating viable companies for each one of these entrepreneurs that maybe we could really create creativity. Very good, very good. Trip, very good. trip is okay? Trip is not too bad. Yeah. It was a long journey, but uh, it's all good. Yeah, where are we coming from? From Melbourne, Australia. Everyone sort of settled in, everyone's become, um, everyone's become really good friends. And I think all the, all the barriers were sort of down and we just became like housemates. The night that I was packing to come here, I was so nervous because everybody here is so smart and so impressive and so intimidating. And then I arrived and everybody just seemed really normal, so that was really refreshing. It's an experiment of bringing together 25 people who are absolutely crazy about what they're doing. The coolest thing so far has been the conversations. We have, I mean, there's 30 plus people living in the house right now from so many different backgrounds. I mean, not, in, not to mention the, the different geographic regions we come from, but different perspectives, ideologies, you know, experiences, all, I mean, the conversations have been unreal. Tonight, we have our first ever opening reception as the first ever Unreasonable Institute, and we asked all the fellows, we gave them two minutes to answer one question. Who are you to define progress in our generation? I clearly remember the first time that I opened the welcome packet to the Unreasonable Institute. I was so incredibly excited. And then, I read the part that said that we had to give a pitch tonight. There's an urgent need for shelter that meets the needs of emergency response and provides victims with proper transitional shelter until permanent housing can be rebuilt. I'm a product designer that believes there are solutions to global problems through design. Now this guy right here, that's, that's Pierre. Oh, I saw you. And Pierre is from France. And Pierre is working on a terrific, terrific project. And let's just see him working his magic with the bushes. We enhance the lives of people with disabilities through sports. Who are you to define progress in our times? We thought there was no one better to answer this question than these girls themselves. Who is the government to define progress for us when that progress does not reach everyone? We're actually creating a new trade system and it's one based on relationships. Education is always changing and has a long way to go. But with low-cost mobile phones and educational games, Millie can give each child their own teacher. We want to create the world's first brand of non-profit toilet paper. We want to raise money and literally put it into the toilet. I believe that for the first time in human history, we have the opportunity to completely eradicate absolute poverty. And I believe that we can do this in a financially sustainable way. With the help of people like you, we can reduce carbon levels to pre-1992 levels in about 20 years. That's a big goal, but I think we can do it. And it starts with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. first week went really well. You know, the entrepreneurs, the fellows are really excited, our entire team were incredibly excited. Uh, but the truth is, is that there's thousands of ideas out there, there's thousands of entrepreneurs, and what separates the good ones from the great ones, and the theoretical from the viable, is execution, is discipline. These entrepreneurs over the next nine weeks, they have no idea what's going to hit them.
The thing I found most interesting is you know, I got to know everyone more on a personal level the last week. And then last night when we had the opening pitch fest, I saw everyone in a completely new light. I was blown away last night. Absolutely blown away. And man, yeah, it was something else. I was like, I was just, I, me I remember sitting there and just like, these kids are for real. <laughs> I think the Unreasonable Institute showed me, wow, look at all these people around just my area, not to mention the world, who are thinking the same way, who are saying, we can be profitable, we can help out society, we can you know, be a part of social justice, and we can be sustainable.